All throughout the heavens, the thunder has gone silent. For today, a Thor has fallen. Valhalla's Meat Hall, today, we lay to rest Brother Ray Thor. Eight years ago, he rose to the rank of Stormbreaker and served with distinction in the Hall of Homicide. He died with a hammer in his hands. He was a devoted son of doom, a Thor of Thors, with those words spoken by the law speaker. Thorleaf raises his hammer in the air. He only has one word to say. Vengeance. A Thor has fallen. A Thor has been taken from us. Now, my brothers and sisters, now, we bring the thunder. And the thunder began as their floating citadel approaches the Greenlands where the Hawks call home. They round up their usual suspects with unreserved force. The thunder does not end at Greenland. The Hawks, the Sinisters, the Ultrons, the Prowlers and the Predators, the Mutants and Monsters, and any and all repeat offenders. It is not a good day to be on the Thor's blacklist. Even with their enhanced interrogation techniques, the Thors are no closer to a new lead. Thorleaf knows this. The only thing they got is the name. Jane Foster. Thorleaf interrogates a man who once worked with Jane Foster of this domain, but he tells the Thunderer that Jane has been gone for months now, and that Thor came shortly afterwards to take her things. This realization shocks Thorleaf, who amongst his core have done this. An intimidating voice states, You wanna know what he looks like? All you gotta do is turn around. Thor the Mighty was what he was once known for. Now, he is Thor the Unworthy. He was stripped from his hammer and casted out of Doomguard in shame, but he is here now with a warning. He tells the ultimate Thor that he will end up unworthy as well if he continues down this path. You need to forget you ever heard that name, unless you want to end up like me, or worse, like your partner. The ultimate Thor challenges the mighty Thor in battle, but this goes against their core rules. No Thor shall lay hands on another, but as you may know, the mighty Thor isn't part of their core anymore. He preemptively strikes his opponent, Leaf rises to his feet, and the two Thors engage. Metal clashes metal, Mjolnir strikes with the power of a thousand storms, but the unworthy holds his own against the hammer of the gods. Lightning strikes from the heavens, and thunder is heard. The two are evenly matched, and the fight comes to a standstill. It begins to rain, and Thor, the unworthy, mockingly says that the Thor core is calling for the ultimate Thor. Thor Leaf says that this is not over, and he ends it on a question. Who is Jane Foster? The unworthy replies, Why does it matter? They're all dead now anyway. Hours later, Thorleaf arrives to meet Throg and his partner, Thur. The forensics Thor tells Leaf that Jane Foster from Egyptia had died three years ago, but someone dug up her bones and paraded them on the streets. Could the killer be taunting them? But the bones are just the beginning of this mystery. A body has been found, but it's not Jane Foster. This body perished a couple months ago, and it's only discovered now. Meet the body of Donald Blake, door-to-door -door hammer salesman, recently retired. Suddenly, a noise alerts the Thors that they are not alone. Throg sends his partner, Thur, to challenge this mysterious figure. He gets knocked out and Throg discovers magic residue. There is magic at play here. They chase down this intruder and pins him to the ground. They found their first suspect. He smirks and he states, Please, call me Loki. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and damn what an issue. Thor's issue 2. Let's get into my review of this bad boy. Get it? Bad boy? <laughs> uh, you guys are no fun. Anyway, so this murder mystery is getting really suspenseful. Right now, Thor's is probably my favorite tie-in so far for Secret Wars. This is probably very biased since I just read it. Coming in second place right now is Civil War's tie-in. You guys are probably wondering why aren't we reviewing this in Comic Island. Well, it's pretty simple. It's hard work making these videos. <laughs> and right now, I'm allocating all of my time on getting Injustice Year 3 out as soon as possible because you guys kindly requested, asked for it, and downright demanded it. I think someone threatened my personal safety if the video isn't uploaded by the end of this week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into reviewing this issue. So the story continues as we get introduced to a new Thor, Thor the Mighty, or as he is known now, Thor the Unworthy. I love the fact that the writers are properly utilizing all of the different versions of Thors. For newer readers that don't follow comics on a regular basis, please allow me to explain why this Thor the Unworthy looks the way he does. This is the most recent look for Thor the Odinson from the main Marvel Universe we call the 616. He lost his arm after a fight with Malekith, and he is unworthy because what he heard from Nick Fury. 
This leads into the new Thor, Goddess of Thunder complete story, and of course you can get that by clicking on the link of the screen. His arm is made out of Uru, the same material that makes up Mjolnir. So this Thor can definitely pack a bit of punch. I never addressed Thorleaf in my previous video, so let me explain them now. It's pretty simple really. This is a look of Thor from the Ultimate Universe. I don't read the Ultimate Universe, so I don't know much about this Thor, but apparently his hammer can be lifted by more people than the hammer from the 616. And of course, his hammer is designed with a curved side. It looks a bit better in my opinion than the hammer from the 616. So this is my favorite scene. The Thor is kicking ass when one of their own dies. Over at the Squadron Sinister tie-in, the Justice League ripoffs found a dead Thor, and they gotta find out a way to solve the mystery or risk having the Thor Corps rain hell on their operation. So it is nice to see what would happen, even if the Squadron Sinister doesn't directly tie in with the Thors. Okay, so the cliffhanger ending was my only complaint. It's very cool that Loki is now caught, but couldn't we get that in the beginning or in the middle of the series? We met Loki already, so there isn't much of a surprise anymore. What if we switch Loki's scene with meeting Thor the Unworthy scene? I think that would have been better in my opinion. Okay, so we are left to assume that all Jane Foster's is dead, and as you may know, Jane Foster, the goddess of thunder from the 616, is still alive. I can't wait till she enters the world of the Thor core. Okay, so I'll go cover a few more points before wrapping this video up. I love that they mentioned Donald Blake in this. Very nice homage to the history of Thor Odinson. I also like this polar bear Thor. I assume he wasn't created for this series, but I have no clue where he came from. If you know, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so how did you enjoy this issue? Do you think it would have been a better cliffhanger if we switched the Loki scene with the Thor the Unworthy scene? Comments below, let me know. Injustice Year 3 is hot in the works, so we'll look out for that. Please don't threaten my personal safety. I get enough of that from my girlfriend when I forget the anniversaries. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time in another Secret Wars tie-in.